Coming up on Mountain News at 530, what impact can legislators have on affordable housing solutions in Eastern Kentucky? Several groups are in Frankfurt trying to find out. And a case brought by grieving parents is asking the Supreme Court to decide if tech companies can be held responsible for user content. Plus, we've got clouds and showers in abundance this week, but also warmer temperatures. The latest coming up as Mountain News at 530 starts now. Dedicated to Southern and Eastern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 530. Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. And I'm Olivia Calfee. Advocates for housing came with a message for lawmakers in Frankfurt today. Several groups, including people who represent Eastern Kentucky, are pushing for more affordable housing solutions, especially in our region where flooding destroyed thousands of homes. WYMT's Phil Pendleton has more on what was said at the state capitol today. That morning of the flood, July 20th. Arnold Weaver has a house to call we, uh, home now we, after suffering major losses in the July flood. We were flooded uh, pretty bad. We lost everything we had in the flood, and we're lucky to get ourselves out. He feels fortunate, but he came to Frankfurt to speak out for the many who are still feeling the impact of that devastation. Advocates say there simply aren't enough housing options. They don't know what they're going to do because there's not enough available. So. It would help a great deal. Well, this group wants lawmakers to support what is called the Affordable Housing Emergency Action Recovery Trust Fund. They say this could result in $300 million to meet a critical housing need. Money is the big problem for many. 95% of people who had their, their homes damaged by the flood did not have flood insurance. He says the average annual income for a family of four in the region is about $30,000, the same amount it will take to repair a home inundated with an inch of flood water. I hope that the legislature will come to our aid. Um, I know there's a lot of other disasters and things, but this one, it still needs attention. It's overwhelming because they say across 13 counties, there were 9,000 homes damaged. In Frankfurt, Phil Pendleton, WYMT Mountain News. The A Heart for Housing group is also pushing legislation to make it easier for homeless people to get identification and for bills to dismiss evictions. Well, not a bad sunset and progress out there. The sun, of course, continuing to set later and later now that we're getting almost to the end of the month of February. That sunshine actually working to create a pretty nice sunset region wide. It's mild, low 60s out there right now. The view from UVA wise even better right now with some of those higher clouds working in mid 50s. They're the usual cooler spot. Temperatures remain in the upper 50s and low 60s. Even a few mid 60s hanging on Jacksboro 66, Middlesboro 64 will continue to see mild conditions through the overnight hours. We're a clean sweep right now in pinpoint Doppler. But that changes as you head further on to the south and west. It's something we'll continue to watch as a warm front heads our way tonight. That'll increase the breeziness and increase the chance for a few showers into the overnight. We're in the middle and upper 40s out there for a low, but those numbers are going to come back up as we head through the rest of tonight as we see milder air moving in. Now, guys, in just a minute, I'll have the latest on when we could see record-breaking temperatures. That's in a few. Evan, thank you. President Biden reaffirmed U.S. support of Ukraine and NATO during a speech in Warsaw, Poland today, nearly a year after Russia's invasion of Ukraine. The address comes shortly after Russian President Vladimir Putin announced Moscow would suspend its participation in a nuclear arms control pact with the United States. CBS's Skylar Henry reports from the White House. Children waving Polish, Ukrainian, and American flags shared the stage with President Biden in Warsaw, following a speech where he promised that the U.S. and its allies will continue to have Ukraine's back while it defends itself. Our support for Ukraine will not waver. NATO will not be divided, and we will not tire. Earlier, the president met with his Polish counterpart. The visit comes a day after Mr. Biden made an unannounced visit to Ukraine in a show of solidarity as the war enters its second year. The visit also came as Russian President Vladimir Putin accused the West of starting the war, something President Biden flatly rejected. The West was not plotting to attack Russia. 
as Putin said today. President Putin chose this war. In his State of the Nation address Tuesday, Putin also announced that Russia will suspend its participation in the new START treaty, which limits each country to no more than 1,550 deployed nuclear warheads and 700 deployed missiles and bombers. The agreement includes on-site inspections to verify compliance. By suspending the last remaining nuclear arms control pact with the United States, Russia has significantly ramped up tensions with the West. Biden administration officials were quick to condemn the action. The announcement by uh, Russia that it's uh, suspending participation in Lusart is deeply unfortunate and irresponsible. The Kremlin later clarified that Russia was not withdrawing from the pact completely and will respect the caps on nuclear weapons set under the treaty. Skyler Henry, CBS News, the White House. The Russian Foreign Ministry also said Russia will keep on exchanging information with the U.S. about test launches of ballistic missiles. Now, you can learn more about President Biden's visit to Poland by watching my First at Four conversation with WYMT White House correspondent John Decker, who's traveling with the president in Poland. That's on our website. First Lady Jill Biden is set to make a historic trip to Africa this week as the Biden administration works to strengthen ties with that continent. She's the first White House principal to visit Sub-Saharan Africa this year. The First Lady will arrive in Namibia on Wednesday. According to an official, while there, Mrs. Biden will focus on the role of young people in continuing to shape their democracy and advance health cooperation. She will then travel to Kenya, where food insecurity and drought will be front and center. The First Lady will also meet with the First Ladies of each country and engage with youth and women's empowerment organizations. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg is working to improve rail safety in the wake of the disastrous train derailment in East Palestine, Ohio. In a letter to Norfolk Southern, he demanded accountability and called for greater safety regulations. Buttigieg wants to increase inspections on high hazard flammable trains. He is also calling on the entire freight rail and shipping industry to phase in safer tank cars by 2025. In addition, Buttigieg is working to advance the train crew staffing rule, which requires a minimum of two crew members during most railroad operations. Norfolk Southern has opposed the proposal. Representatives David Cicilline is resigning from Congress. A source familiar with the matter says the Rhode Island Democrat will step down on June 1st to run the Rhode Island Community Foundation. Cicilline was first elected to Congress in 2010. Prior to that, he served as mayor of Providence for eight years and as a state representative. The Supreme Court heard arguments in the first of two cases this week taking aim at the broad protections afforded to tech companies. At issue, whether they can be held liable for content their users post. As CBS's Nicole D'Antonio reports, the outcome in the high court could affect the entire Internet. Tuesday's case, Gonzalez v. Google, was brought by grieving parents whose daughter was killed in the Paris terror attacks in 2015. They sued YouTube for posting ISIS content. The claim here is about the encouragement of users to go look at particular content. It's the first of two cases this week taking aim at 26 words in a nearly 30-year-old law known as the Communications Decency Act. It offers tech companies broad protection against litigation over third-party content. The Internet would have never gotten off the ground if anybody could sue every time. Dominating the conversation, algorithms, which recommend similar web content based on user preferences. Everybody is trying their best to figure out how this statute applies. The statute, which was a pre-algorithm statute, applies in a post-algorithm world. The high court also enjoyed a laugh at its own expense. You know, these are not like the nine greatest experts on the Internet. <laughs> All kidding aside, a narrow ruling from the high court could change the way people use the Internet. If they were to say, you know, any targeted content, any personalized content is not covered by Q30, then you'll probably see less personalization and you'll see probably back to, if you remember, Facebook from the mid-2000s where it's reverse chronological and nothing's prioritized. Rulings in both cases are expected by the end of June. Nicole D'Antonio, CBS News, the Supreme Court. Coming up on Mountain News at 530, tax time is approaching. 
And if you're expecting a refund, experts say planning ahead for the cash is key. We have tips to help you make smart money moves. And we've got some late spring air trying to arrive before the end of the week. Details on that and rain chances coming up after this.